it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. In the 1960s, both Percy and I were members of the Farragut Striper Club. And uh, I first met Percy at one of the monthly meetings. And um, I was told by uh, Bill Mead who Percy Heath was. And um, we, we began talking and uh, we de a friendship developed. And the uh, following year in, the, in the April, he invited me to go to Malibu Beach with him. And that was the first time I ever fished with it was at Malibu Beach, and we fished sandworms in April for striped bass. And we had a pretty good day. And then we started to talk and talk, and we really developed a pretty good friendship. And we fished together whenever our schedules permitted. Um, I was a cop in the city, person, as you know, was a musician. And uh, whenever he was in town, he would call me, you want to go fishing? Yeah, sure, first, let's go. And we fished Democrat Point. Um, and all the way to Montauk. And uh, actually it was Percy who showed me what I knew, or what I now know about Montauk Point. And um, he took me uh, through back roads of uh, the old garbage dump to Culloden Point in 1969. Um, I can remember another time when he took me to the old Boy Scout camp, which is somewhere near Shadwan, right off East Lake Drive, along a, a small dirt path took you right by the old Boy Scout camp. And uh, I can remember times that we fished together. Um, I can also remember uh, Percy coming from California, where he played a gig. And he came down and he was using this plug in Scott's, uh, right, right, just right to the right-hand side of the bluffs. And uh, he was catching fish. And we thought he was using a big rebel, which is what we used in those years. And it turned out it was the seven-inch red fin. We had never seen one before because we didn't use them here. But Percy brought it back from California where the Western West Coast fishermen use it for striped bass, very successful. So Percy uh, ordered some, they caught on over here, and then we all started to use the seven inch redfin. So it was Percy who actually introduced the seven inch redfin to, to, to Long Island and to New Yorkers. Percy, as good as he was with plugs, he hated using the bucktail. And most regulars of the day never used bucktail. Um, today you would use a bucktail, we would use a tin. Um, there are still many regulars who don't use bucktails. I, I, I'm not one of them. I, I love using the bucktail. But um, uh, I know Percy uh, used to call them those hairy things. I hate them. And... Um, he used to tell me that Stewie, that darn kid, he's so good with the bucktail, I don't like it, I can't stand it. I don't know how he could be so good. And as you all know, Stewie Heath is a master with the bucktail. And, uh, but we were very successful in those years on tins. Um, I think the bucktail really caught on out here, I, I believe around 1990, is when the bucktail really took hold in Montauk, and we've been using them ever since. It's the go-to plug, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, it, it's, it's one of the great, but Percy hated it. Rarely used it. Um, used a lot of tin, different size tin, Castmaster, Hopkins, and uh, he was very successful. Uh, Percy also had a boat, uh, which you may not know, and the boat was called the Fiddler. And um, on several occasions, he invited me to go along with him, and we would go fluke fishing off the south side of Montauk. Percy was an avid, very good fluke fisherman. And we did very well. In fact, um, his wife, June, held the woman's world record for fluke, I believe, somewhere around 20, 21 pounds. She held the woman's world record for fluke. Now, don't quote me on the size because I, I, I'm not sure, but for, for a number of years, she, she held the, the woman's record. He was a member of the original Tuskegee Airmen. 
Um, I know that after the war, um, I know we grew up in, in the South. Not sure where, but I know we grew up in the South. And the family moved to Pennsylvania, to the Philadelphia area, when he was young. Um, his mother sang. His mother was a singer. His father uh, played the uh, clarinet. And two of his brothers were also musicians. And uh, as we all know, Percy was a, a played the fiddle. And um, I remember he went to some school, uh, some music school, which I can't think of the name offhand. Um, but I remember him telling me that um, he, he went to school uh, to really learn uh, how to be successful at playing the fiddle. And um, in the early 50s, um, he was an original member of the Modern Jazz Quartet. Um, the quartet existed before that, I believe, he said. But um, I think in the 50s, the group that he played with and called the Modern Jazz Quartet got together. Percy always liked to fish. And uh, he just came to Montauk uh, just uh, on, on a whim one time. And um, he fell in love with the place. Uh, for, for a number of years, um, he lived in St. Albans. The family lived in St. Albans. And for a number of years, they rented a house right on, uh, right off the lake. And um, the house they rented was from a guy, a person by the name of John Manzeri, who lived in the Bronx, who uh, actually was a member of the Farragut Striper Club at one time. And uh, Percy would rent from him every summer. The family would relocate from Queens to Montauk. And after a good many years, uh, he bought the house, uh, his, the current residence where they live today. I'm not going to tell you where it is because <laughs> I, I, I'm not at liberty to tell you. But uh, I've been there many times and uh, Stewie, Stewie lives there still with his mom. Um, Percy passed in, in 2005 and about a year later, um, Jack Yee and, uh, and uh, John, uh, no, Daviola um, had a, uh, decided they were going to have a memorial for uh, Percy uh, and they put the memorial in Turtle Cove, and I was at the dedication, and I was I was asked to say a few words at the dedication, and I told some Percy Heat stories, and uh, it was a wonderful thing. I, 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 and he was a, a great gentleman. I guess growing up in the South, and even when he was in the service, that um, he had some some bad times uh, uh, racially uh, during during the days. Uh, he once told me that uh, he felt safer on the army base than he did walking in, in, in you know, downtown on the streets of the South. Uh, he, he had had some bitter resentments uh, of those days, and, and he harbored them still. But never ever did that stand, that, that ever let it stand between a black musician and a white New York City police officer. That, that, that didn't exist in those days. But we were very, very close, and we were good friends. And... Um, uh, he never and he never let it enter into his feelings for for me or any of his other friends, and that's why I say he was a true gentleman. 